Well, first of all, this is annual. You know, this is not fix it. This is trying to create a new kind of conversation on this subject. And I think that's really what is both urgent, but urgent in the long term as well. That things are just kind of unraveling at a frightening speed. I mean, I've written about this. You know, the return of populism started in the 90s. Uh, racism, the return of, of uh, socially acceptable racism in the Western democracy started around 2000. Um, uh, you know, this is unraveling at a frightening speed. So we need to really rethink how we talk about these things. We have to get out of discussions. I mean, I listened uh, yesterday and watched yesterday, the, you know, French police, one of the finest police forces in the world, uh, obliging a woman to undress on a beach for moral reasons. Now that is lunacy. That is delusional. And if they'd been pressed, they would have said it was part of their universal values. Doubly delusional. So it's in a very important moment to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, calm down everybody. Let's start rethinking and talking differently and watching carefully what kind of language we're using and what the language means. What is the intent of the language? Is it actually to exclude people? For example, tiny example in French, in France, the word veil, voile, is used to describe women wearing a veil, but also women who are simply wearing a scarf. So the word has been chosen to imply that there is something about wearing a scarf, which is the same as wearing a covering on the face. You know, see, that's a serious use of language, which leads to an enormous problem. You know, you know where, first of all, I mean, I think there are a whole pile of elements to it. Part of it is public and, and very open to everybody. Part of it is experts. Um, and it's very hard to know exactly what impact you're going to have where. But for example, there's a whole part of the program which is really about the relationship between immigration, refugees, immigration, citizenship, and the economy. And we've done a number of studies and it's perfectly clear that uh, immigration leads to further prosperity and doesn't take jobs from people. But most people don't believe that, outside of Canada anyway. Or, you know, most people don't believe this. There's an enormous amount of work to be done to show people how this works. You know, more, uh, the percentage of immigrants who start new corporations is higher than the percentage of Canadians born who start new corporations. It's amazing figures. Um, and uh, so I think, that, you know, just making the whole business community think differently about funding and financing, the, 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 you know, it sounds boring. No, this isn't boring. This has to do with how you put together your economy and put together your country. Um, I think that, the, that, that people will come away from this first one on the whole question of what we call inclusion, which is to say citizenship, belonging, that... Maybe, maybe a lot of countries have to start rethinking their concepts of citizenship. That uh, maybe they, the mistake that's been made is that, that, um, that they don't see immigrants as future citizens and they try to hide it or to treat it in a negative way. Um, maybe it'll cause a further spread of the idea of big citizenship ceremonies, which are like a marriage, like a big public celebration where everybody buys in and the people who become citizens come with their family and their friends and the people from their offices. And it's a fun celebration of a change in your life, not something that people are supposed to be hiding. You know, you receive an official paper in the mail. It's not that at all. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe it'll be uh, certain models of how to uh, do education better for immigrant kids. Because people have to think very, very seriously that for every immigrant you bring in whose first language is not your language, it is the obligation of the state to fund at a far higher level than for their own citizens education in order to help these kids find their way in the language and to know the history. Not to tell them what to do, to give them an opportunity to get through the door. 
they have to be in smaller classes. They have to, you know, they, as a number of countries do, they have to have larger, they have to have automatic access to big programs and language and culture and so on. That's a big change, which is not happening in most countries. It's not, a, and they say, oh, look, these kids are not integrating. Uh, uh, what did you do to help them? So there are dozens and dozens of examples. And I think by bringing these people together, they're going to say, oh, and that works, does it? Tell us how it works. So some of it is really grassroots and practical. Um, and uh, some of it is big picture. And some of it will be about, you know, how do we turn the debate, which is turning into a catastrophe around uh, um, refugees in particular, what they call migrants, but refugees. Not simply in Europe. I mean, after all, Latin America also. Right? Enormous migration, immigration questions. I mean, Mexico and the United States, big parts of Central America and other parts of the Americas.